Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. In today's video, we are going to keep working with MLflow experiments, specifically about retrieving experiments. And the first method that we're going to explore is mlflow.getExperiment by name. The only argument that this method takes is the name of the experiments. Now, if the, in, the, the experiment exists, uh, this method will return an experiment object, but if it doesn't exist, it will return none. So let's get started with some examples. I'm going to set my tracking it right. Then I'm going to use this um, method, right? I'm using get experiment by name, and I am providing this name. We know that this experiment does not exist, so experiment it will be equals to none. So let me run this cell. And yes, experiment does not exist. Now I'm going to provide the name of an experiment that I know exists, right? Like this one, creating experiments. We created this one in the previous video. And here we got the experiment object. And since this is an object, we can access attributes by using the dot notation. And here I am accessing the name and the experiment ID. And we can also show more information about this experiment. Uh, as you can see here, we have the experiment ID, the name, artifact location, life cycle stage, and tags. Now, let's take a look at a different uh, method, mlflow.getExperiment. And in this case, this method takes the parameter experiment ID. Now, this method uh, returns an experiment object as well. But if the experiment ID is not found, it will throw an exception. Let's take a look at this. Here, I am using mflow.getExperiment, right? And as experiment ID, I am providing the ID of the previous experiment. So let me run this. Okay, I got the object and I was able to access the attributes by using the dot notation, the name and the experiment ID. But let's say that I provide uh, the ID of an experiment that doesn't exist. For example, in this case, I am modifying the experiment ID by adding this string. So let's run this. Okay, it could not find the experiment with ID, this ID. Finally, we can use mlflow.setExperiment to retrieve an experiment. Because remember that when we want to set an experiment as the active experiment, we should use this method. But this method returns an experiment object. So here, what I'm doing is uh, using the method mlflow.setExperiment, providing the experiment name, and get, uh, capturing the experiment object in this variable so that I can access the name and experiment ID. And as we saw in a previous video, we can also set experiment using the experiment ID, as we are doing here. So that's it. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching it, and see you next time.